It is a moving experience each year on Palm Sunday as we go up the mountain with Jesus towards the temple, accompanying him on his ascent. But what are we really doing when we join the procession as part of the throng which went up with Jesus to Jerusalem and hailed him as King of Israel? Does it have anything to do with the reality of our life and world? To answer this, we must first be clear about what Jesus himself wished to do and actually did. He was journeying towards the temple in the holy city, towards that place for which Israel ensured in a particular way God's closeness to his people. The ultimate goal of his pilgrimage was the heights of God himself, to those heights he wanted to lift every human being. Our procession today is meant then to be an image of something deeper, to reflect the fact that together with Jesus we are setting out on a pilgrimage along the high road that leads to the living God. Words of Pope Benedict for Palm Sunday. And although today we are not able to join together to enter into our traditional Palm Sunday procession, we journey in procession in spirit over the course of this week to the place known as Golgotha, the place of the skull where indeed Jesus lifted us to the heights of God himself.
days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And once again, a very warm welcome to our parish mass on this Palm Sunday. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this morning, we draw ever closer to the torture tree on Golgotha. And so let us place before his cross those ways we have erred and strayed from his way. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the Father's right hand, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility, for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So now we prepare ourselves for today's reading. Our first reading this morning is taken from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheek to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm today, words from Psalm 21. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. 
He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his friend. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our second reading this morning is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high, and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens on earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. First thing in the morning, the chief priests together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered, it is you who say it. And the chief priest brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again, Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters, who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowds went up and asked, and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised 
it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man you call the King of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown, and put it on him. Then they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Aha, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself. Come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out, and in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Laman Sabbatnatha, which means, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was the Son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, who was the mother of James the Younger, and Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God, and he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph who brought a shroud 
took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of Joseph were watching and took a note of where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. And so today, the part of our Palm Sunday Mass, which is missing because I am here celebrating Mass by myself without you, is the procession when we would process around the local streets as a witness to Jesus, to the beginning of the final week of his earthly life prior to his death and resurrection. But normally we would hear words from one of the Gospel accounts of how Jesus entered Jerusalem and was proclaimed as the Messiah by his disciples and ordinary people before we uh, go on our way around the streets of the parish. One of the interesting details which is recorded in all of the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark and Luke, and recorded in virtually the same words, is the instruction from Jesus to the disciples to go into a village and find a donkey. They were to bring the donkey to Jesus, but if the owners questioned this, they were simply to say, The master needs it and will send it back directly. So Jesus must have had some arrangement with these people. We don't know who they are and they're not mentioned again. Whether the donkey was paid for or the loan of the donkey was paid for, we don't know. Whether they were simply sympathetic to Jesus and loaned their donkey willingly and freely We don't know. They can't have been open followers of Jesus, otherwise they would have been recognised as disciples, but perhaps they were secret sympathisers. At the same time, they must have realised that the donkey was being borrowed for something significant. And they must have realised, I think, that something quite significant lay in store for Jesus later in that week. Maybe though afterwards they realised that their donkey had been used to enable the Messiah to enter the holy city in a fitting manner. Perhaps this realisation helped them after the resurrection to move from being secret sympathisers to becoming true believers. Sometimes, for all of us, it's an insignificant event or act that starts us on the path to things of true faith. And so many of you will have heard me talk about the donkey before, and of course the legend that, uh, that, 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 that every uh, donkey has a cross on its back because... It was the donkey that bore Jesus on Palm Sunday and happened to be there when Jesus was ascending the mount to Calvary carrying his cross. The donkey witnessed Jesus' plight and wished that it could carry the cross for him since it was a beast of burden and well suited to carrying heavy weights. And so, in reward for the love this donkey demonstrated towards Jesus, God causes the shadow of the cross to fall on the donkey's back, and it would become a living sign of God's love through all the ages. Well, of course, this may just be another holy story, but it's a beautiful one, and it contains some truth that indeed 
our love and loyalty to Jesus will certainly be rewarded. The senior people and citizens of Jerusalem certainly did not expect the Messiah to enter the city on a donkey accompanied by poor people off the street waving palms. And indeed, they were concerned that this Jesus was a troublemaker and that if he persisted in opposing them, there would be only one way of dealing with it. And so a solution would be swiftly put into place. Little did they know that later on their nailing Jesus to the cross would bring their whole world crashing down around them and inaugurate the imminent coming of the kingdom of God. They had no idea that this Jesus was the son of God and that by breaking through the barrier of death he would open up eternal life for believers. And so once again this year we've begun our Holy Week journey in a way that uh, is uh, one which we're unaccustomed to and as I said at the start of this homily we we indeed miss our procession and some of the other customs that help us on our way. Nevertheless as we journey on we will see Jesus reflect reflected in our celebration of the Last Supper. We will celebrate the Last Supper of Jesus with his apostles. We will witness his agony in the garden and we'll observe his betrayal by one of his closest. We'll view his trial and scourging and we'll once again accompany him on his journey to the hill of Calvary. We'll be there when he's nailed to the cross and we'll gaze upon him in his last pangs of agony. We'll honour him in the moment of his death and we'll accompany him to the tomb on the hillside and then we will wait. We'll wait with Mary Magdalene. We'll go to the tomb early in the morning to find it empty, coming to the realisation that Jesus is risen from the dead and then once again our joy is made complete. One of the problems with lockdown I guess has been that with churches closed and service, services being broadcast over the net we've not been able to immerse ourselves in our liturgy, in our masses and our services which in a most extraordinary way make those wonderful happenings 2,000 years ago present to us in real time. Uh, a video or broadcast can only be a pale imitation of that and so we hope we can now move forward and restart our mass together in church. Whichever way though we do not observe the Paschal Mystery as an outsider from a distance. Through the liturgy, even through uh, a film of Mass, we become part of these events. They become present to us in the here and now. And this is brought home to us in a very concrete way in our celebration of Mass, where time past, present and future comes together in a remarkable way upon the altar. The Last Supper, 2,000 years in the past, the Mass we celebrate today, the Banquet of Heaven, which is far away in the future, on our altar, these things come together and through God's greatest gift, we are present at all three of them. Imagine that. So today we witness Christ entering the holy city humbly yet triumphantly for those with eyes to see. Today we have our palm crosses at home many of us that will keep during the coming year. Many will place them behind the crucifix which is hung in a place of honour in our homes 
and whenever we look upon these palms, we'll recall Jesus riding on his donkey, making his entry into the city, which will be the place where he would inaugurate the kingdom of God and open the gates of heaven. There indeed is our hope. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation be with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. 
holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the Pope, our Archbishops, our Bishops David and Jonathan, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the Resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I do hope that you have enjoyed joining me for the first part of our celebration of Holy Week. We will next meet together on Monday, Thursday, when our Mass of the Last Supper will be online only at 7.30pm in the evening. That will be the last broadcast for the time being, and we will be able to meet in person here in church on Good Friday at 3pm for the Good Friday liturgies, and again on Easter Sunday for the 10.30 Mass. If you are intending to come to Small Heath for either of those Masses here in church, it would be just helpful if you could drop me a line to let me know so that we're able to plan ahead. Now, this morning we end with our blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.